ready, copy me. Eddie, be there. Eddie. A plane just hit the other We want to tell you what we know as we know it. But we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. A, a major uh, disaster here. Look at that. Now, you remember, there's two World Trade Centers. What we're seeing there is the apparent impact of the plane. It would look uh, to be on the upper 10 or so stories of this. I believe it's a 110-story building. Can you see any actual uh, people in that area who may have been uh, may have been hit by any of this debris or were not able to get out of the way? Can you see any crowds that may be too close to where they should be? And they really are the beacons of New York. It was there that there was the explosion a couple of years ago uh, brought about by terrorists. We've, that's all gone through the courts. But this, we don't know anything about. We don't know about anything that has happened here other than the fact that there's obviously been a major incident there. It, it, does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God, oh, explosion there's explosion right now. Hold on, people are running. Wait, hold, hold on, on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. Another one just hit. Something else just hit. A very large plane just oh. flew directly over my building, and there's been another. Now it's obvious, I think, that, uh, that there's a second plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. In an apparent terrorist attack on our country, the full resources of the federal government go to help the victims and their families. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And a plane did hit the Pentagon, is that true? The, the West Front, which uh, faces sort of toward Arlington National Cemetery. Officially, nobody knows exactly what happened. I think the picture is pretty clear. As the professor has pointed out, there is no uh, ready defense for this type of attack. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now, raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way! Confirm that a portion of at least one of the towers uh, has collapsed. It's hard to put it into words, and maybe one doesn't need to. Both trade towers, where thousands of people were, on this day, Tuesday, have now been attacked and destroyed. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes, or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings but they cannot touch the foundation of America. Today, our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Tonight, I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you, good night, and God bless America.
We're in the 70, 78th floor of the South Tower. I'm an IT consultant. I, I worked for uh, Thompson Financial Baseline. They were one of my customers. I was in the towers for about two years at that point. September 11th was kind of my first day back early. About quarter to nine, I felt a little vibration. Um, not much I would think about. And out my wind, my view was the Southeast view. So I, my view was the Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge. I was a young man entering the business world for the first time. It was my first job out of school. Um, I had grand visions of being a investment banker on Wall Street. And this was my first job towards that goal. Um, I worked for a company called Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. It was the second day of my training class. So we started on September 10th. And in the morning of September 11th, it was just like any typical normal morning, sunny, um, nice day. Uh, we were on the 61st floor of the South Tower. And we were able to get a coffee break uh, when that training session ended around 8.45 or so in the morning uh, of September 11th. So right around that time, the first plane crashed into the North Tower. It was probably around 8.46, I think, 8.47. Um, so I was in seventh grade at the time. I was, I was 12 years old. I was a sophomore. And I was still living in the dorm, so I lived in Mowry Hall. And um, I remember the morning of 9 11, um, right at that moment where the first plane hit the tower. Um, it was at that precise moment um, where I had someone come in um, and, and tell me that the, a plane hit to turn on the television. I was living. Uh, my wife and I were living in Columbus, Ohio at the time. And I was teaching at a small liberal arts college called Muskingum College outside of Columbus. And I, was, I remember I was driving out there that morning, listening to NPR and hearing initial reports of that there was some sort of fire in one of the World Trade Center towers something was going on but it wasn't clear what what was going on i was living in india at that point i suddenly got a phone call from a former student and colleague and he was living in philadelphia at that point he still lives in philadelphia in a suburb and he called me up and he said he called me up like live he said have you heard and i'm like hi what's up what have i heard and he said I'm sure it's on TV, switch it on. You know, a plane has hit one of the towers in New York. And I'm like, what kind of, and I'm switching on the TV and I'm saying, what kind of a plane has hit the tower? Out my window a couple minutes, I saw papers flying. And at that height, you're not supposed to see much. Um, we were there about other days, we were above the police helicopters, above the blimps. But one time it rained on the ground and we had sun all day long, we were above the clouds. And that was a freaky day. It almost looked like confetti. They were like little fireballs. It was shrapnel from the first tower after it hit. And we thought nothing of it because the big square building, you can only see out the one side and you know, the North Towers were behind us. So we just thought, oh, this is New York City. Stuff like this happens every day. It's probably some kind of parade or something. And we're getting ready to head back into uh, the training. And um, an announcement came up with a loudspeaker in the South Tower and they said, um, please don't be alarmed. We, we, we want everyone to evacuate to the emergency exits. Um, we think there was an accident in North Tower. Initially, they thought it was a small plane that just passenger commercial plane. Somebody didn't know what he was doing or lost control of the plane and it hit the building. And that's kind of what their thoughts were. And after the sky lobby and somebody said Tower 1 got hit by a plane. I thought a little Cessna. I thought it was a little a guy was flying too close to the building. Usually in lower Manhattan, it's windy with directions of how the, how the ground is laid out. And I figured he got pushed into the building. Exactly what I thought. So I was with four other people. Um, I was leaving with Steven and he said to me, I forgot something in my office. And I said, I'll see you downstairs. Kind of just like we're talking now, he went right. I went straight to the elevators. Uh, at least at that point, trying to like be as normal as possible. I was just, shaken because uh, I didn't know you know what was going on I never seen anything like that before 
Um, in the past, I actually visited the World Trade Center, went to the top of the World Trade Center to visit and everything. So I was quite familiar with the uh, area and also the building too. So that was quite a shock. And then of course, the second plane hit. And I, I couldn't tell you how long I was in the stairwell before, but you know, um, I don't think it was much longer, right? Because the second one hit within minutes. Um, boom, you know, loud smack, our buildings hit. And all we see, because we're already in the emergency exit, is the, you know, the most secure structure of the, of the World Trade Center, the, the most biggest buildings in the world. We just see the concrete just cracking right in front of us, um, cracks right down the, the structure. And I had a really gut feeling that something more was going on than just an accident. I don't know if it was delayed live being showed to us, but within minutes, we were all sitting and I'd alerted my office, people in my office had all switched on all the televisions and everybody I knew were all glued to the TV sets about this thing happening thousands of miles away because we had all got family in New York and friends. Looked like a war zone outside. There's all debris outside, the doors were locked. Building security was basically pushing everybody into the shopping mall, which is the first level of the complex was building access to get into the buildings. If you work there or a visitor into the shopping mall. So building security is pushing everybody into the shopping mall, but keeping people away from tower one. But I remember the police yelling, get out of the building, get out of the building. And I'm like, but building security is pushing everybody in here. Like there's no, there was, there was chaos. There was no rhyme or reason at all. I was on church street and Barclay street when I felt the second plane come in. I never saw it, I was too close. I felt it, 74 floors down, hit from 74 to 84. 74 floors down, 800 feet down. I felt it on the ground. I felt the pressure from it. I felt the heat from it. Um, I was behind, a, there's a federal building down there. I was behind the federal building and the building, I looked at that building and the building, it was like a sound wave, but it looked like the building rippled. I used our TV as my alarm clock. So I had a 9.30 class, so I don't even know when I probably had it set to go off, but the TV turned on and there's like a plane hitting a building. And I was like, why is there a disaster movie on TV? And I like started changing the channels and every channel was the same thing. And I was like, what is happening? And I think by that time it might have been the second plane. Yeah, at first you thought it was an accident or you thought it was like, you didn't jump immediately to people are that crazy to fly planes into buildings. And I just remember sort of just everyone being extremely like stunned of what what happened and not really knowing uh, how to process it. And I think, you know, everything was sort of canceled. And I remember then then just driving home back to Columbus. Everyone panicked. People that worked there for years that were like not there for training that worked there immediately thought we were getting bombed because 10 years earlier there was a bomb um, in the building. Everything got a little nuts. Um, you know, there was dust from the concrete cracking, it was smoke, it was. Um, very tough to see, uh, but the one thing I did see and will never forget uh, for the rest of my life is the uh, the firemen and the first responders. Um, just amazing because they're outside and they know the risk. We don't, and they go up 61 floors to rescue folks, make sure everyone's okay, knowing what's you know what's happening from the outside. And I just, you know, vivid pictures of their faces walking past me as I'm, they're walking up as I'm walking down. But I remember we didn't sleep much that night because it was getting to be late night in India, like way past midnight and we were all in front of the TV, um, watching things unfold with complete disbelief because far away in India, the idea was the US is like a fortress and they told everyone to go home to be with their families. Um, some people actually had uh, connections to those in New York City um, at that time, um, including myself. Uh, my brother was actually working in, um, and still does, works in Lower Manhattan, not too far from that site. 
So everyone went home. Um, everyone was pretty much glued to the television. You know, it was a really sullen mood, I would say. You know, going home, um, listening to the radio um, on, the, on the drive home. You know, everyone was definitely fearful of what was going on, what was happening. Again, I don't mean to say this in melodramatic terms. Where is the president of the United States? The president of the United States led, I know we don't know where he is, but pretty soon the country needs to know where he is. Um, so basically, I ended up um, walking north. I ended up, didn't know what happened. I had no idea what was going on. As I was walking through Manhattan, I heard the Pentagon got hit, the White House got hit, the Capitol got hit. Um, I need to get to New Jersey on a normal day. On a normal day, it's about a three minute train ride across the river. Um, I ended up walking about 15, 16 miles that day. I walked up to Midtown Manhattan, ended up getting on a ferry to New Jersey. I got very lucky up there. When I got up there, New York Waterway, there's small boats. They run back and forth. They, to this day, they, they hold about 200 people each to go back and forth all day long. When I got up to, when I got up to New York Waterway at Midtown, um, somebody said the line stretched for 20 city blocks. I never saw the end of the line. And we evacuated us cat corner out to Broad Street. Um, and still, we have no clue what's going on because we're in the building where it all happened and everything shut down. Phone lines, you didn't have camera phones back then, you didn't have cell phones that, that worked through these type of things. So you were really communicationless um, back at that time. Um, it was only about, you know, maybe a few blocks later walking when a friend of mine from training class said, turn around, look at that. There's a huge gaping hole in one of the buildings and we're just looking at it like, oh my God, it hit us kind of what was going on. And um, all we could do is walk back to our hotel where we were staying, which was another six blocks, try to get a hold of family. But again, you couldn't because from everything was kind of shut down. You couldn't get out of the city. Everything was on lockdown. Um, so it was a good couple hours by the time we got back and we were able to get a phone working to call my parents and fiance at the time, now my wife. Um, and they shared with us what they saw on the TV and thought we were gone because all they saw was buildings falling and that's kind of really when it hit home. another explosion or a portion of the building falling away, but something major just happened at that building. So the front tower, the top portion of which is collapsing, Good Lord. There are no words. I had like besides my roommate we had kind of a small group of friends that we often like had dinner with and things like that and that evening on campus there was a vigil or a gathering um outside of the libraries by that point in the day we were all kind of burn out from watching like constant news where they just like didn't know anything and kept saying the same thing and kept replaying the same like building collapses and things like that and like like the imagery was really disturbing and to have it replayed and replayed one thing the planes crashing into the towers but 
the whole tower is coming down as well and then the whole recovery mission that took place in the days that followed as well i definitely saw um you know as most people recall it the the uptake in patriotism you know we, we saw a lot of like the increased flags and, and people really banding together and, and trying to help and i think probably on the back end that's where i noticed a lot of the change in my childhood of you know i i before that time it was hey just come back before the street lights are on and and i think that after that is when society as a whole kind of shifted and focused more on the you know the the hyper parenting the the knowing where children are and i think that was just one of the first times that you know our parents had really seen things shaken to the core of you know anything could happen and i i think that changed a wave of um how quickly i matured but also um how life changed just so quickly for being a kid i was in no shape i mean this was a tuesday my wife got me to go out to the mall on Friday, I think Friday night, we went out to the mall. And I can tell you, I don't want to be there. I looked at you, I didn't care. And don't take this how it sounds, but I don't care if you're black, white, green, blue. I don't care what you look like. I hated you. I couldn't look at anybody. I was in such a bad spot from this. And I've overcome that, of course. Um, but the city itself, people couldn't have helped more. Everybody, anywhere you went, it was, and you saw a lot of pictures of the rescue recovery workers down there and stuff, but that was all over the city. I went into the city, Manhattan, maybe a month or two later, and people just wanted to help, whether it's, you know, can I can I buy you a cup of coffee? Can I can I help you go across the street? It, it didn't matter. People just wanted to help people. You know, I, you hear about people when they, when they're, when they're in, something this serious or they've seen something this horrific personally talk about um, survivor's guilt um that's a real thing so uh that was what i what i endured probably the first couple weeks pretty heavy till i geez at least a couple of years um past 9 11 i didn't talk about it until maybe about five ten years ago and the reason I didn't want to see things, you know, I found out later is because of how guilty I felt. Why me? Why do I get to live and the other people when I see that stuff on the TV and hear widows talk about loved ones lost? I, you know, I had a small child at the time and a fiance at the time, a family at the time. What, why, why do I get to live? And then that transgressed into, okay, if I'm going to live through this, I'm going to live the best way I can. And, um, contribute to society the best way we can by raising children the right, right way, just being a good overall person. So it's eventually long-term helped me, I think, be a better person, but it was tough at first because I had that survivor's guilt. I can hear you. <laughs> perspective looking back is is also sort of that uh, end of maybe a honeymoon period of the post Cold War world that that international institutions uh, kind of a, a again the, the liberal West view is going to dominate the world suddenly events said not so fast my fellow citizens at this hour American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Of the United States has, in, in the Middle East, has had a huge impact. I think 
uh, you know, we're, we're looking at right now sort of the United States finally leaving Afghanistan after 20 years. The Taliban is, is taking over again. And so after, you know, something over a trillion dollars spent in 2,200 uh, American servicemen and women's lives being lost, plus allies, plus tens of thousands of Afghanis being killed and, you know, creating a void for something like ISIS to emerge in, in, in Iraq. So on the international stage, particularly in the Middle East, it's had an enormous impact. Those accusations were flying thick and fast as almost, at almost anyone, uh, which endangered a lot of Indian Muslims, because when people are angry, as you know, they don't see sense. So a lot of people, Muslims living in India, were targeted just because obviously the religion of those who would attack um, was Islam. And that's a very strange connection to draw, but you know, logic takes a back seat. In this conflict, America faces an enemy who has no regard for conventions of war or rules of morality. I want Americans and all the world to know that coalition forces will make every effort to spare innocent civilians from harm. We have no ambition in Iraq except to remove a threat and restore control of that country to its own people. And you can know that our forces will be coming home as soon as their work is done. Now that conflict has come, the only way to limit its duration is to apply decisive force. And I assure you, this will not be a campaign of half measures, and we will accept no outcome but victory. May God bless our country and all who defend her. their lives so tragically. I think we also remember it as a, as a time that we all came together. And I think there was a remembrance of bravery of people that, that went to be able to help. Most importantly is to remember the lives lost and the families impacted, uh, disrupted. Those events reverberated through these communities, not just in New York City, but out into also surrounding areas and thinking about, as I said, the loss and the lives impacted and the lives lost and, and, and lives altered for forever, I think is really important to remember. Not only the individuals that we lost that day, the 3,000 plus individuals that we lost, but also all those police officers and fire personnel that also lost their lives that went in um, the rubble and, and tried to save individuals that lost their own lives as well. Um, I think we have to definitely think about those individuals too. Um, we always say, well, we lost 3,000 plus lives in the World Trade Center um, in 9-11, but a lot of people fail to also remember those people that tried to help other people to safety. I think it's a real testament to how intolerance can lead to, you know, just the loss of innocence. Intolerance can create so much death, so much loss of life um, of innocent people that were just going about their lives. And then it, you know, it cuts both ways that, um, that we need to be watchful that we don't become intolerant because of things like this. All those who perish, all those heroic efforts to save so many lives, in doing so many of them died as well, as we know, first responders. Um, and, you know, we, we remember those who laid down their lives that day and all those who, who worked wonders to save many lives. I would like to remember it as a day when America stood up and the world stood together, united against any act of terror. 
not as a day of hatred not as a day of saying let's never forgive but let's never forget what will be it's a day that tells me that the world can be united even if it's grief and tragedy that brought us together it is one day that did bring the world dis- irrespective of this huge political differences that existed at that point and still exists between different countries the entire country the united states with all its political differences came together standing united against this attack and saying let's you know rebuild to me it's all about the people it's important that the memory of the people who died are never forgotten that's why we volunteer and and the story of the day i mean there's a lot of stuff on the internet that's not true you know and to me to hear from somebody no matter what it is i i we have friends from Oklahoma City bombing and you know we have this we we bond with them because they went through something horrible too you know i've heard world war 2 veterans talk i've heard, heard sandy hook parents talk and you know one you want to hear from somebody who went through this but two they're talking about their kids especially sandy hook or they're talking about our friends in Oklahoma City and their survivors from there and family members and stuff like that so to me it's all about the people today is a perfect um this is a perfect time to use 911 as a reminder to this our country and this world um and it's really just enduring um persistent like we can endure anything and it's because of the people uh people caring about other people the first responders the firefighters the policemen giving up their own lives to save other lives you know we have this crazy political environment these days we have covid we're we're going through a lot right now as a country and i think a perfect reminder 911 to say look what we endured we could do it again and we'll continue to do it if we stick together and and help each other out and be good people